Hey crafters, today I will be showing you how I made this miniature house facade of three houses I saw in Amsterdam. I started out by taking some dense cardboard and outlining the houses that I wanted. So I just started sketching and this is what I came up with. Once I was happy with it, I cut it out and this took a lot longer than I thought it would because it wasn't as easy to go through this with my X-Acto knife as I had hoped. But once I made it through, just do the outline and all of the windows and you should be good. So this is what it looked like when I finally managed to cut all the pieces out. I then took some paper and covered all the raw edges to make it look nicer in the end. Now on to the brick. I took some thin cork material and I cut out long skinny bricks out of this. What I noticed in Amsterdam was that the bricks are not the standard size. They are a lot longer and skinnier than regular bricks. So that is what I went for. Here is me applying them. So I just used a glue stick and then one by one apply them with tweezers and I can tell you right now this was a very time consuming and frustrating process. So at the bottom here I'm just using another piece just to get a very straight line. As you can tell when I made the paper surround I also redrew the edges of the window so I had an outline to follow. Here is my progress. Make sure to stagger the pattern as you're doing this and that is going to give you the most natural result. The easiest way I found to do this process was to glue a small area with glue stick and then just place a few of these at a time. Something that I noticed with using such a small scale was that the bricks were very difficult to get to be the same size. Some were slightly thicker, some were slightly thinner. What I did to try to minimize the impact of this was to just place the thicker ones in a row and the skinnier ones in one row. So that way you don't really notice that the pattern is kind of getting thicker or thinner. As you can see between the windows, I decided to put one half of a brick down and then a long one and then a half and then a long one. This in hindsight was not the easiest way to do this. What I would have done from the beginning, but I only realized on like the last few windows, which is frustrating, is that it's very difficult to go in with the glue stick after you've done this. The easiest thing to do would be to put two halves straight away, then a long one, and then two halves, and then a straight, uh, a long one. That is how you would get the best result doing this, and then you can just fix the edges with your X-Acto knife. Here, what I'm doing with the window is placing half of a brick, and then the long ones, and then the next row would be a full brick, and then the next one would be half a brick. So just continue doing that, and that is gonna continue to stagger the pattern, and it will look the nicest. As you can see, I'm not being too mindful of the edge because I'm just going to go in with my X-Acto knife at the end and just clean that edge up. Once you get to the end of this process and you're laying your last few bricks, don't be too scared by the fact that you could have a slightly, slightly bigger gap between the row you were doing and the last row. The paint we're gonna use is very forgiving with these like small little things so you're not really gonna be able to tell at the end. But here I am coming to the end of this very frustrating long process. 
If you have ex access to anything that looks like brick and is in the scale you're using, you might want to go with that because this was not something I'm recommending because this was horrible. Um, as you can see, I made sure not to continue the brick pattern straight across all three buildings. I made sure to make distinguished stops and starts of the building so that you could tell them apart easily. But here is the final product. And on to the next step, which was a lot more frustrating than I assumed it will be. <laughs> so this entire project is basically three steps of me being very frustrated with myself for starting this project, but me being too stubborn to stop. So I decided to go for three paint colors, navy blue, pink, and dark gray. I had a lot of anxiety <laughs> picking these colors out, so the navy blue one was the only one I knew I wanted to do, and the other two were just the anxiety factor for me. <laughs> You want to be really careful as you're doing this because if you put too much paint on your brush you're gonna fill in the gap between the bricks and that is gonna just ruin all the work you just did. So I have quite small amounts of paint on my brush and I'm just lightly brushing over the face of the bricks and then I'm carefully going in between the bricks so that the paint will get on the back and the sides and will just look seamless and nice. I'm being very careful not to get any of the blue paint on the pink house because the pink is not going to cover it very well. Here I'm also being very careful of not getting paint of the on the windows which is stupid on the blue house because I ended up painting the windows black anyway. <laughs> As you see here I finally figured that out. And now on to the pink house. The pink and the grey house I decided to have white windows, so those I'm being more careful with. But just continue this long, frustrating process for me <laughs> because the end result I kind of... I'm trying to like make myself think that the end result is worth all of this, but like I'm not... I wouldn't do it again, <laughs> let's just say that. Something you might have noticed about this is that the windows are tall at the bottom and get smaller as they go up. This is something I heard about the architecture in Amsterdam when I was there. They said that if you had a lot of money back when these houses were built, you like to make the windows tall at the bottom and small as they went up because if you were standing on the street, the building would appear, appear a lot taller, so it just meant that you had more money. Which I thought was a really fascinating thing, and I mimicked that in this process. These three houses are actually three houses that I saw there. They are not the same colors. I decided to make my own decisions on the colors. These three houses are not next to each other in Amsterdam. I just found the three most interesting ones that I could see and decided to put those three together and then just paint them my own colors. The blue building I think actually is blue, but the other two are not these colors. I did however see a few pink houses in Amsterdam, so that's why I'm, I feel like it's okay to paint the middle one pink. Now on to the last one. I kind of really like the look of the cardboard or the cork as it is here but the cardboard backing did not match so that's why I had to paint it. Usually I work in 112 scale but this project is a lot smaller than that and that is just because I did not have the space for this in 112 scale and that would have taken so much longer I feel like but maybe not because it's the same amount of bricks either way. One thing that I was considering doing that I think would have been really fun is making this a facade for a future dollhouse. 
but a few things would be hard with that is that the windows are not on the same level as each other so you would have to make it in three separate chunks but that would be fine with me because it would look so cool and finally we are done with step two I think it looks really nice so I'm hoping it was worth it. Here are a few pieces that I cut out to match the buildings. These are out of the thick cardboard and I just painted these pieces white. Here are a few very small slim pieces of wood I cut out. These are going to go around the windows. I made sure to paint these before I started cutting them out. And here is after I've cut them all out, I just lay them out like this so that I would remember which one goes where. Here I have cut out some thin plastic sheets as the windows. I did this on my bunny cage tutorial if you want to check that out. For the crosses on the windows, I made sure to take some thin strips of paper. For the blue house, I painted the strips black, and for the others, I left them white. As you can see here, I started gluing them down. This is with glue stick. Just take the piece of paper, drag it across, across the glue, and then onto the window. So make sure everything goes horizontal first and then vertical, and that will give you a seamless look. As you can tell, I have some painter's tape on here, and that is so that I could make some marks on it. The marks are to more easily get the straight lines on the windows, and here is what it looks like after I have put all of those on. I am slowly starting to glue down the sides of the windows and here is what that looks like when all of the sides are down except around the doors here is what i did for the stairs i decided i wanted a really flat profile on this project so I made this small flat staircase to go along and I just decided to paint this gray. I tried to go for kind of a concrete gray, but I don't know if that really shows up on camera or not. If you wanted to, you could make a 3D version of the stairs and have them come out. I just decided I wanted a really flat profile, so this is what I decided to go for. Here I'm making the decorative trim on top of the pink house. So I have one flat piece and then I have two strips of wood. The top strip is half of the thickness of the bottom strip. And I just glue all three on top of each other. Once that is all glued in place, I just painted that white. And here I am adding small, small squares the same distance apart. And this is what, in my opinion, kind of makes this trim look really nice. Here are the pieces and just glue them down one by one using tweezers. Here is what that looks like. At the bottom I just took two strips of paper to make it look less plain. Here I am making a very basic version of a door for these houses. So I am painting two of the doors black and I've taken a strip of wood for this. Here I have made an outline in white around it and I am just gluing the door in place on top of the cardboard back. 
here is the basic shapes of the doors the white one is for the pink house and the black ones are for the other doors the doors are all different sizes as well Here I'm just trying to figure out the layout, make sure everything is centered before I go ahead and glue it down. I did paint the back of this so that the it would be less cleanup for me afterwards. But it's basically a frame around the door and then a few middle pieces that go straight across, that's what I'm putting there now, and then just some fancy stuff for the for the door if you actually want to see me make a real door please just check out my door tutorial i'll link it below for the handle i cut out a very small piece of rectangular paper painted that black and i decided all three doors would have similar hardware for the handles i made tiny tiny balls of clay and i just glued those in place Here is me trying to show you, because it was kind of hard with black on black, but here is basically the finished product. And we have finally reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, even though I complained a bit but I promise not to do that in the next video. I hope you learned something from this tutorial and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!